Uh, my name is uh, Mike Wallops. All right, and so what got you interested in uh, independent California? Uh, well, I'm a, I was born and raised in California, uh, as were my parents. Uh, I've lived, lived my whole life uh, here in California. I've always thought of myself as a Californian. Uh, I, often, I often tell people I, I didn't go to the United States until I was 18. didn't really know what it was about. Uh, and uh, so I've, my, my, my primary identity has always been uh, has always been Californian, and basically just, uh, you know, the more I went around the United States, the more I, I, I focused on American politics and American culture and the American way of viewing the world, I just realized how, how different we are. And, uh, and you know, not, not better, not, but distinct. Uh, and that I really did think of myself as a Californian who was, who was really only comfortable in California and that, uh, that our way of seeing reality was the one that made sense to me. And so how distinct is from, like, the American politics to California politics? How distinct is it? Um, well, I think it's distinct in a number of ways. I think, uh, first of all, one of the big things is, of course, just California's complexity. Um, you know, the United States is, is, is itself a complex place because it, it spans an entire continent. I think, uh, I think Americans have a tendency to forget that, uh, the, the how, how vast the United States is, how universal this idea of an American culture is, of a universal the, the use of English is and such like. But California has always been geographically isolated uh, from what thinks of itself as the United States. And that has led to uh, a complexity both socially and, and economically uh, and, and politically in, in terms of how we need to approach our own issues. We can't just take as a cookie cutter recipe the way America solves its problems and then make it work within California. I think just California is so complex it requires uh, a unique and specific approach to the issues that face us and we can't just sort of uh, continue to to live off of, of the decisions made 2,500 miles away. Okay. So, we all heard a myth, like, you know, we already settled this with a civil war. Uh, what do you say about that? I mean, so first of all, okay, so so, so two things. The, the California National Party and its seeking for independence is, is, is going to enter negotiations with the United States to find an agreement that we can both see as beneficial to our future of our two nations. So, this is not unilateral. This is not violent. Uh, this is not, and also this is this is not predicated on on this idea of 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 wanting to, in essence, perpetuate an injustice. And I think that's one of the major things. California is not seeking independence so much to protect a corrupt system as to be able to enshrine our own system, which we've been continually denied. And, and even, even within California state politics, we are still stuck with a two-party system that owes its origins to pol you know, political issues 100 plus years ago in a battle that's happening 2,500 miles away. Um, and so, so unlike the Civil War, what we're really trying to do here is just a recognition that what California needs to do is to be able to live independently from the type of politics and the type of rhetoric that exists in the United States because, you know, I don't, I don't want to talk about the United States too much, but I think the United States is undergoing a, a very strong identity crisis about what it is and what it means, and that question is just unrelated to us. Uh, and, and I think we need to be able to look at those questions that, that, that are related just as much as possible. It's so we also heard a bit like you know there's no way to see because it's illegal. Can you elaborate more on that? So um, the only the only mention of of the idea of a state leaving the United States that has been made in U.S. legal history is Texas versus White. So I think this is important legal language because by saying with the consent of the states, it doesn't say it's illegal. You need a constitutional amendment to change it. The judgment indicates that the Constitution contains within it a way to leave through the consent of the states. And so I would argue that actually, uh, I, I would argue, yes, if we were to just leave unilaterally, that would be unconstitutional. That would be illegal under American law. But it has also granted us a means out. And I think states join the United States through a legal mechanism. Voted by the House, voted by the Senate, approved by the President, after a petition by the territory that wants to become a state. The Constitution says nothing about how do you overturn a law. How do you overturn a law by practice? You pass another law that overwrites it. So the question of, oh, well, you can't get rid of a state, but all a state is, is a result of a legal process. How do you undo it? The same way you undo any other legal process under constitutional law. You have a referendum where the people of California say, we'd like out, you get it approved by the House and Senate, signed by the President, that's it. So I think this push that it's illegal, or it's impossible, or it needs a constitutional amendment, I think these are, are based on flawed uh, legal understanding. So what if the rule of law, I mean, what can we implement 
uh, for the, the function of a better society. Yeah, so I think, I think uh, you know, obviously a, a lot of people are interested in the CMT because of the independence tax, but I think what's more important is the California National Party is a party that is specifically focused on California issues, uh, that specifically wants to make policy that takes into account not these ideological battles happening far away, but what best represents our people and what best represents, what best represents our people in specific localities. So I think there are things that, that, that are necessary for the entirety of California, uh, like civil rights policies, environmental policies, while at the same time there are issues that are best dealt with at as local a level as possible, at the neighborhood, at the city, at the county, at the regional level, depending on what it is you're trying to solve. So I think I think a good a good basis for the California National Party's decision making is that decisions should be made at the most local level possible to solve the problem effectively. The United States, as I said, I think is undergoing a major identity crisis about about who it is and, and who, what, who and what it represents. And I think all we can do is say that California recognizes that we exist and are strong because people come from around the world to come here. As early as the 1850s, people were calling California America's America, because that was where everybody really, really wound up. You know, now people. You know, a lot of people don't move to the United States and are like, boy, I really want to make my home in South Dakota. No offense to South Dakota, but it's just like, it's not on the radar in the same way California, which is in essence an internationally recognized power is. Um, and so I think the best we can do as, as the United States has its issues about immigration, about who is really an American, the best we can do is say, a Californian is somebody who comes to California and wants to be a Californian. And here's a bonus question. So we know there's a lot of talk about Americans wanting to get rid of the UN and they're trying to replace it to Montreal or the Netherlands. If mm -hmm. California were to be independent, would it invite the UN to have headquarters in any, any major city? I mean, I, you know, if the if the I mean the UN was founded in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I mean the UN is uh, is, is it ha has its birth here in California, uh, and so I think uh, I think I think uh, I, I think. California absolutely wants to be part of the international community. I think it already is part of the international community. I think the international community itself possibly recognizes the distinctness of California more than many Californians do right now. So uh, I definitely think uh, something, something I, again, I would, yeah, a, a UN presence in, in California I think would, be, would be absolutely uh, in line with California's place in the world. The United Nations can't be reformed. I think, uh, I think California would be on the side of creating a more globally represented uh, representative international community uh, than the one that is currently dominated by uh, world powers from 70, 80 years ago. Who I mean, you know, I mean, no, again, no disrespect to to the United Kingdom, but I mean, uh, the the sun is setting on the British Empire all the time now. Uh, so, so its idea that it retains uh, its status as as something that requires this this uh, this place on the Security Council, whereas Brazil and Nigeria do not, uh, I think is, is, is old India are, are ultimately going to have to be reformed in some way. And if the UN doesn't reform itself, I think California would be supportive of a, uh, an international standard that does represent all communities around the world more effectively.